now on WRDE Coast TV. An old bridge in need of an upgrade. What Fenwick Island is discussing to keep traffic flowing on Route 54. A popular way to get around in the nation's summer capital, why electric bikes are up for discussion. And we need to discuss Tropical Cyclone 16 because it's powering its way along the east coast and expected to run right across our area. And now parts of our viewing area are under a tropical storm warning. Keeping a watch on a busy downtown, a change coming to the Millsboro Police Department surveillance process. From the beaches to the bays, coverage you can count on. WRDE Coast TV News at 6 starts right now. The Route 54 bridge is experiencing or expecting rather a major reconstruction. But first, the town of Fenwick Island is weighing in on the specifics of the plan. Good evening, I'm Charlie Sakaitis. And I'm Mallory Metzner. Madeline Overturf has the night off. Welcome to our news at 6. We begin tonight with a bridge in Fenwick Island set to get some major reconstruction. But first, there are a few particulars to work out. Route 54 is a main passageway to Fenwick Island that is getting a major facelift. Del Dot is set to begin work in May of next year. Coast TV News reporter Carmen Holland shows us how there are a lot of mixed feelings about how this new bridge Bridge should look. Change is on the way for Route 54. In just over a year, Del Dot plans to reconstruct the bridge, citing wear and tear and safety issues. But local William Kidd doesn't see the need. It's a good looking bridge. It's a uh, modern concrete and steel bridge that is not deteriorating. So I, I don't know why they want to waste their money on that. Del Dot's plan is to add an extra lane in the middle of the bridge to allow turns expand the sidewalk, and add a bike lane, along with adding a traffic light at Monroe and Bennett. Today, the town of Fenwick Island hosted a planning commission meeting. They took public comment on the project and collected Del Dot surveys that polled people on what design particulars they would like to see for 54. Less is more is probably how we feel about it. As long as it's safe and um, works for the community in that respect, Kathy Getzel uses Route 54 every day, and she says this work is necessary, even if traffic during construction becomes a hassle. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people who do walk in the mornings and, and bicycle to and from work, so it's, it's a good idea to revamp that bridge. The town of Fenwick Island says it may take time to complete this project, but it's worth it. Well, we're glad it's going to be safer, and I also feel like people feel it's, it's the gate it should represent the character and culture of the community. And with the influx of people, maintenance of infrastructure is inevitable. That was Carmen Holland reporting. Although some single lane closures can be expected, Del Dot says they plan to keep all lanes open during construction. The Route 54 reconstruction is set to be complete by May 2026. Let's go ahead and take a live look outside right now at our 45th Street Tap House camera down there in Ocean City. Things look reasonably calm at the moment, but as we check in with our first alert chief meteorologist, Paul Williams, there's a storm heading this way. Yeah, it's brewing and it's brewing courtesy of a low wind shear and high moisture and warm water. Now, I don't usually go a wide view first because I like to focus on just our stuff here, but this is where our story begins. We have a low pressure system that's swirling right now and it's called Tropical Cyclone 16. It's not even named yet, but it's expected to strengthen to a tropical storm. All right, so right now we have sustained winds at about 35 miles per hour and it's moving to the north at about eight miles per hour. But watch this path. We're continuing to track it and we're expected to reach landfall for us as a tropical storm into North Carolina. But then it swings directly over our immediate area. So the path of this storm and the placement of it is of great concern to us because it's going to bring with it a tremendous amount of moisture, winds, and the possibility of up to five inches of rain in some cases. So it's looking to perhaps bring two to six inches of rain. High wind warning is in effect in our area as a result of it, up to 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. And we're looking at coastal issues, high surf, coastal flooding, as well as erosion in a massive way. Right now we have a tropical storm warning in effect for Worcester County. That's all of Ocean City, but not just there. It's also in effect for Dorchester and Somerset. So 
this entire area under a tropical storm warning. We are bracing for tropical storm force winds as well as rains and the possibility of flooding. Now, we have several other advisories that we want to also include and talk to you about. But right now, we're looking at these warnings at this present time, which is also inclusive of Accomac, stays in effect until Sunday. I'm going to go over more details on what's happening here in our immediate area in our main weather segment. So please stick around. We want to give you an update on what's happening on these next two days, Mallory. All and due to the forecast, events for the weekend are already getting canceled or postponed. The Lewis Farmers Market says its Saturday market at George H. P. Smith Park has been canceled this weekend. The last one of the season is September 30th. And the Farmers Market isn't the only cancellation. The Family Emergency Preparedness Day scheduled for Saturday in Camden has been canceled. The Trap Pond Beer, Wine and Spirits Festival is canceled. The Tangier Classic Fishing Tournament in Crisfield, that's now canceled as well. The Walk to End Alzheimer's in Rehoboth Beach will now be held Saturday the 30th. We have more events that are canceled or postponed on WRDE.com. Keeping watch of a busy street in downtown Millsboro, the town's police department is getting a little over $39,000 in grant money for projects including a change to the way surveillance cameras on Main Street operate. Coast TV's Britt Leone is live in Millsboro. Britt, there are a few things contributing to this change in surveillance. Charlie Mallory, I'm here outside the police department on Main Street where these panels you see above my head here connect to three different surveillance cameras outside of businesses along this street. This is so the police and businesses can see what's happening outside their shops 24 seven, which as you can imagine provides a great deal of security. Now here's what's going to change. Come January, these panels aren't going to be needed anymore. That's because an antenna is going to be built right outside of a new facility currently under construction just a few streets down the road. Take a look at some footage we shot earlier today of the cameras. One placed outside a gun store, another across the street outside an antique shop, and one outside of this Dollar General. I spoke with manager of that Dollar General, Janet Blackburn, who says the cameras, they're working great. And even though the department is moving a little further away, she has faith the cameras will stay that way. Well, I have a good relationship with them. When, when I need them, they're there. And putting those cameras up when they brought it up, it was wonderful. And I think it's a great asset to the town. Police Chief Brian Calloway says they haven't seen an increase in crime this year, and that's because of the cameras in part. He says he expects the antenna to be up and running by January of 2024, when the department will move to the new facility. Charlie Mallory, back to you. Thank you, Britt. Laurel property owners can expect larger bills in the future. The town says it will have an increase in real estate taxes of 30%. That starts October 1st. Water rates will also go up. A long planned repaving of Rehoboth Avenue was initially scheduled to begin this fall, but you're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that before you start seeing construction on the avenue. Coast TV News reporter Charles Reinert is live in Rehoboth Beach. Charles, the city says that the change in date it's just out of their control. Charlie, right now it's supposed to be the off season months, but it's not uncommon to see hundreds of cars and visitors going up and down here on the avenue. And that was a concern with some business owners here on Rehoboth Avenue of having this, rep this repaving project happen in the fall. But now that time frame is being pushed back to sometime in early 2024. The city says it is working with Delta to get the job done, but it's still ironing out the details with finishing the contract. The city's public works department says the exact start time is still up in the air. All that's got to get the contract package ready. It's got to be advertised and do all the, those administrative things. And then uh, we're kind of at their mercy as to when they get that ready to go. The last time Rehoboth Avenue was repaved was in 2005. Williams just wants to reassure everyone that when construction does begin, you'll still be able to drive up and down here on Rehoboth Avenue and it won't be closed down completely. I'm Charles Reiner live in Rehoboth Beach, Coast TV News. Thank you, Charles. The future of e-bikes in Rehoboth Beach, that's up for debate. The city looking to discuss e-bike policy. And as Coach TV reporter Elisa Weber shows us, People are fired up with opinions of every kind on these e-bikes. On any given day, you can see people riding e-bikes throughout Rehoboth Beach, so much so that now the city is considering an e-bike policy. Anne Jorlin, who usually rides her foot-powered bike in Rehoboth, is concerned about the extra horsepower of e-bikes. 
they're going too fast on the trails. I think that there should be some sort of a governor um, to regulate how fast they're going. I'd also like to see e-cyclists having a little bit more etiquette when they're passing and give us a heads up that they're coming along and they're going to go by you just a on your left type of thing. Currently, Rehoboth does not have any e-bike policies in place. Rebecca Barlow loves e-bikes, but does believe you have to be careful on any bike you choose to ride. I just think it really depends on the rider. I, I see no reason why they're any more dangerous than a regular bike. Most e-bikes have the option to turn off the motor and ride it just like a normal bike, which is why Jerry McFarlane thinks a complete ban is an overkill. Regulations, yeah, because they're still bikes. <laughs> And, and what if your battery dies, you can just ride, you know, a lot of, like our one lady, just this is her first time on her e-bike, and she's trying not to use the battery unless she needs it. On tighter bicycle trails like this one where I'm standing right now, some believe that there should be speed regulations in place for e-bikes in order to keep everyone safe who's either walking, running, or riding on the trail. In Rehoboth Beach, I'm Elisa Weber, Coast TV News. E-bike policy was supposed to be on the docket at a Rehoboth Beach Streets and Transportation Committee meeting today, but that meeting was canceled. The topic will be taken up again at a later date, and as you could tell in Elisa's story, a lot of people have strong opinions on how e-bikes should be covered moving forward. We've got a lot more news to get into this evening. Coming up, Friday Night Lights, the marquee matchups in Delaware to keep a close eye on. And we're keeping a close eye on a Tropical Cyclone 16 because we're expecting it to make its move across our immediate area and bringing with it concerns for flooding throughout all of Sussex County. But first, taking a look from above, the changes in progress for Stango Park and the surrounding area. We'll be back in 60 seconds. It's Ford Truck Month. Time to defeat any task in a Ford F-150. Premium comfort, easy access, innovative tech. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks, 46 years straight. So get to Ford Truck Month and get into a built Ford Tough truck. Ain't nobody stopping me. Get an F-150 with 3.9% financing for 60 months plus $2,500 bonus cash. Boscov's VIP Days, our biggest home sale of the season. Saturday, join us for Demo Days. Product demos, food samples, and extra discounts. The programmable caloric 10-quart dual basket air fryer, only $69.99. Bissell ready-to-clean 2-in-1 cordless stick vacuum, only $79.99. Ashley Cooper flannel or fleece sheet sets, all sizes, just $19.99. Hamilton Beach Flex Brew Coffee Maker, $79.99. Register to win a $2,500 furniture and mattress shopping spree during VIP Days at all Boscov's is just one of Lewis's prized outdoor open spaces, but changes are underway and near completion that are going to add educational opportunities for visitors. As Coast TV News reporter Tori Seagrave shows us, while some are excited by the new work, others say new more needs to be done. From wind sculptures to a big red caboose to a train station replica, the Lewis Public Library and Stango Park continue to grow. Kathy Beagle says her grandkid looks forward to seeing these sorts of things when she visits. So she would love to look at the caboose and, and everything involved in that. The next project in the works is a 3,000 square foot outdoor pavilion for the library, expanding space for educational programs already held inside. I think it's just, just a wonderful way to draw people and especially plays, open air theaters would be nice. However, people on the Georgetown Lewis Trail, which runs through the park, say the path itself needs to be prioritized. I think that they would be wise to do a better job separating bikers and walkers. They put us in the same paths as them, and that, that, I think that creates issues. Parents say the library programs are in such high demand that moving outdoors to accommodate is necessary. They have a great children's learning garden and they do summer series with magicians and jugglers and different things like that. And I know people come from much further than Lewis to take advantage of the park and the programs. The Lewis Public Library says they're hopeful to begin construction of the new pavilion come winter. Until then, programs will continue inside the library. I'm Tori Seagraves in Lewis, Post TV News. Flooding, strong winds, and possible tornadoes are just a few of the concerns we'll have over this weekend. I'll break down the details of that and the timing for you. The American black duck is an iconic species well known throughout the Delmarva Peninsula. 
Although the population is currently stable, they're well below their population goals and they're considered a species of concern. The USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service looks to increase and restore black duck habitat throughout the Delmarva Peninsula. I utilize the Working Lands for Wildlife program to help transform a low-lying wet area into waterfowl habitat. To learn more about the Working Lands for Wildlife program, contact your local USDA service center. Dinosaur Adventure roars into Salisbury. One weekend only. Wicomico Civic Center. With life-size dinosaurs and massive family fun. Experience the thrill of the prehistoric age. Featuring the ferocious T-Rex, Triceratops, Velociraptor, and more. Go on a realistic fossil dig. Take a ride on your favorite dinosaur. Bounce around in the prehistoric playground. And a baby dinosaur meet and greet. Take an amazing dinosaur adventure. This weekend only. Wicomico Civic Center. Tickets at dinosauradventure.com. Get ready for the all-new, redesigned 2024 Subaru Crosstrek. The 2024 Crosstrek is safer than ever for even more peace of mind on every drive. With a Subaru Crosstrek, you can count on plenty of adventures ahead. And when you choose Gateway Subaru, you're supporting local schools through Subaru Loves Learning, which helps kids get the school supplies they need. We're more than just a car company. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Tomorrow at 4 on Coast Life, dive into action with Delmarva Dock Dogs. Meet this week's Pet of the Week. Plus, Coast TV News' Jeanette Gallardo is going to update us on weekend storm expectations and how you can prepare. Coast Life, tomorrow at 4 on Coast TV. good on you. Right now, play our exciting new Battleship, Connect 4, and Yahtzee Fastplay games for a chance to win up to $50,000. Come and get your fun. Come and get your fun. Right now, I want to encourage you, by all means, pull out the phone. Be sure you scan the QR code in the corner because we are under a uh, tropical storm warning in our area. We're watching out for tropical storm conditions, literally and seriously, in our area. This is because of Tropical Cyclone 16. Now, it's located well to our south and it's moving to the north at about 8 miles per hour. Sustained winds at 35 miles per hour, and it's moving. In fact, let me back up because I'm going to show you something real quick. Watch this. You see how it's expected by Friday to transfer or begin to strengthen to a tropical storm? And look at how it's, the path is, because I want to just show you this step by step. Washington, D.C. area, here's where we are, and here's where that storm is going to be. Now, I want you to imagine this is just a pizza pie. I want to cut it into four pieces. That top right corner, that's the more dangerous side or the more volatile side. Well, that's the side that we're on with this system, which is why we are under all of these tropical storm warnings. Now, that's Worcester until Sunday, but not just Worcester. Dorset, uh, excuse me, Dorchester, Somerset, Wicomico. Everybody that you see highlighted here in red, Accomack County as well, under a tropical storm warning. We're watching out for serious winds, inundation with uh, rainfall and flooding. And then we have the high tides happening. In fact, a little bit more to our south, we could possibly see some record tying or record breaking uh, high tides as a result of this storm pushing through because of the timing of it. Storm warning off of the uh, off of our coast here from Dewey Beach, Ocean View, and Fenwick Island. This is actually highlighting 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. And then we have an additional high wind concern as you go from the shore inland to areas like Lewis, Midway Park, also throughout South Bethany, Ocean View, Bayville, and Fenwick Island, 45 to 50 mile per hour winds. In addition to that, we're concerned about flooding throughout the entire county and really throughout the entire area. You see, what's happening is we had a tremendous amount of atmospheric moisture that's helping to really strengthen this storm, okay? Now, when you have shear with a tropical storm, shear can kind of cut it off and, you know, zap the strength of it. But, see, this time, we're, not, we're looking at shear that's actually helping the storm to stay strong, okay? So, high moisture and warm water, those are the two attributes that's helping to keep this thing strong. So, we're looking at major flooding, 
throughout a lot of inland areas, at least minor flooding along the coast. When you talk about that kind of flooding, we want to take a look at the future waves. So we're looking at four to eight foot waves from Lewis down towards Fenwick Island for Saturday. But then when you take a look at it from, let's say, Ocean Pines down towards Chincoteague, we could possibly see up to eight to 12 foot waves. Then there's the winds, 30 to 50 mile per hour winds inland, 40 to 60 mile per hour winds steadily for us along the shore. I mean, you take a look at our future gust and you can see out of the northeast, 45 to 50 mile per hour winds and then the rainfall on top of it. One to three, Georgetown and to the northwest and from Georgetown down towards Ocean City and all places in between, we could get up to three, maybe even up to five inches of rain in such a short period of time. Take a look at our future rain graph and you can see we're looking for over four inches of rain in Ocean City and Berlin, close to four inches in Millsboro and over two and a half inches in Seaford alone. So all of that goes into what we're expecting. Now let's talk about the timing of the storms. Saturday in the morning, storms begin to kind of boom through. By nine o'clock, we're looking at strong storms in Rehoboth Beach as well as Dewey Beach and Georgetown, nine o'clock. And this model just updated in between our five and 6 p.m. newscast. Then by Saturday afternoon, we're gonna see it stay cloudy and I hope it stays that way because that will be helpful to avoid tornadoes. Then from Ocean City down towards Snow Hill, we're looking at it picking up for early Saturday morning at three in the morning, then after that, we could see it clear out. Now, from Ocean City down towards Snow Hill, I'm more concerned about additional tornado or tornadic activity there because it's really looking like it's going to clear quickly in that part of our viewing area. Here's a look at our extended forecast. Remember, we have first alert night for Friday night and all day Saturday. Delmarva Sports Network from the Wawa Studios. Yeah, tonight our live game pits North Carolina against Wahai in Salzburg. So for your first day fans, we're going to skip ahead to an exciting slate tomorrow. Our game of the night Friday from Dagsboro is a battle of undefeateds. Indian River and Polytech. IR remains one of the contenders in 1A football under Philip Townsend. The Indians have beaten A.I. DuPont and most recently St. E's in a nail biter. The green and gold rely on their experience up front. Five seniors lead the way in the offensive line, including Austin Grice, a senior captain. Kickoff from Dagsboro is set for 5 p.m. tomorrow. And up in Felton, Cape Henlopen heads to Lake Forest. The Vikings are trying to improve to 3-0 for the first time since 2014. Cape took down Red Lion 21-14 before a round of Del Castle last weekend. Marquis James has been a problem for opposing defenses so far, rushing for three scores in the Vikings' two wins. Meanwhile, Lake fell the Red Lion its last time out. The Spartans hope to contend for a 2A title in 2023 led by senior quarterback Jonathan Tindall and linebacker Trayvon Honda. Kickoff from Lake is scheduled for 7 p.m. tomorrow. I do for Sports Tonight. Join us here on Coast TV to watch Sunday night football this week. It's Pittsburgh, the Steelers versus the Las Vegas Raiders. That coverage starts at 7 p.m. And then right after the game, we're going to have your hyper local Coast TV news to get you ready for the work week. We'll be right back. When you bank with the Farmers Bank of Willards, something wonderful happens. You make a difference in your own community. The Farmers Bank has remained locally owned and operated for nearly 100 years, and decisions on where to invest profits are still made right here by local people. In just the last 25 years, over $200 million have been reinvested into our local economy to help local families, businesses, schools, towns, and youth programs build and grow and prosper. Switch to the Farmers Bank of Willards, where people matter. All Exteriors offers vinyl siding, stone veneer, and another option you may never have heard of, fiber cement siding. It's nearly indestructible and energy efficient. Plus, get leaf relief gutter guards free or $1,000 off. Call All Exteriors today. I am so proud to announce the 72 sold was just recognized by the prestigious Inc. 5000 as the number one fastest growing real estate firm in Arizona and in the top five in America. Why? Because our program for selling your home in eight days for thousands more than selling the traditional way really works. If you care about getting more money for your home, go to the number one real estate firm in Arizona at 72sold.com. Are you gonna kiss me or not?
103.9 and 106.3. We're local, we're coast country, and we're Delmarva proud. Our training and roofing qualifies all exteriors to give the best one. 50-year material and 25-year workmanship. Plus, get Leaf Relief gutter guards free or $1,000 off or payments as low as $99 a month. Call All Exteriors for your free quote today. Cap off the season with the four best days of fall at Sunfest. Experience the ultimate celebration of food, drinks, arts, crafts, and entertainment along the boards from October 19th to the 22nd. Embrace fall with a variety of fun activities, including beach bonfires, corn maze, tractor rides, and pet and bicycle events. Shop around over 200 arts and crafts vendors. Immerse yourself in music with an incredible lineup of free musical performances. Enjoy free family fun all day. Visit Oceocean.com Sunfest for more. WRDE First Alert Weather, brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Want to update you on a couple of the uh, advisors and warnings that we have. We have high wind warning in effect along the Sussex County uh, coast from Lewis, Rehoboth, Ocean View. In addition to that, we have the coastal flood watch in effect because we're concerned about rain in a short period of time between two to up to even five inches of rain in some areas throughout all of Sussex. Here's a look at your exclusive Coast TV 10 day forecast. Now we have two first alert days. This starts on Friday, Friday evening, right around 9 30, 10 o'clock is when this stuff is going to start kicking up. It'll happen all night long. And then we're looking for problem weather all day for Saturday. Okay. That's winds at 50 or more mile per hour winds, high, high tides, as well as significant waves. And we'll catch a break after we get past the weekend. Thanks for joining us here for Coast TV News at 6. For more news for more local weather, download our Coast TV News app. The NBC Nightly News is up next. And we're going to see you later tonight for Coast TV News at 11. Have a great evening.